I had one, one story. There was a man who uh, had a, in Germany, he had a cello worth 150,000 marks. Beautiful. And he was a, a soloist. He got himself into a lot of financial trouble and he had to sell it. And all he could afford was a 1,500 mark uh, cheap Chinese whatever it was. And so we worked on it, uh, which, which includes uh, acupuncturing the wood. So what you, you, you very carefully feel all over the front and back and the sides, and through various techniques we use, you can feel where the wood is not, as it was, as homogeneous as it was elsewhere. You just go in there with a little, little, tiny uh, acupuncture needle, or sometimes just a tiny little bit of blue tack or something like that, and they say, ah, all of a sudden it comes alive, it breathes. And of course the, the bridge height and the, oh, there's all these, there's so many, many things. And every time you do it, this is the beauty about a, a professional. They say, oh, I can feel it, I can feel it, I can feel it. And it's a, it's a wonderful experience to see them change and to hear and feel the, the change uh, in the music. We do this with drums, with, with uh, pianos, uh, with, with all instruments. They could all be optimised to help the musician feel more loved by the instrument, more one with the instrument, more happily married, the two of them together, and therefore giving, uh, giving more uh, to the audience. It's, it's um, uh, clarinets, uh, flutes, uh, every instrument. I went with a woman once in, uh, in, this, uh, in Vienna to the music sort of area, and, and she wanted to buy a, a, a bow. And so we go to this store and they have uh, shelves, pull out shelves of bows. And you start off with the very expensive and you go through and suddenly you find this is a very cheap one. They were even, they were angry with me because that's what they ended up choosing. And yet it was so much more alive because what the maker was looking for is not what we were looking for. And then, but we had to balance it a little bit, do a few things. But it, it had was it had the spirit of it was so was so obvious. A lot of work with brass. Now again, the homogene homogeneity of the brass is not necessarily um, the same all the way through uh, because of the manufacturing processes. So so forth. You can put just a little tab of blue tack there, a little thing there and it'll start to change. But you've got to start off with the mouthpiece. Um, what mouthpiece to use, you know? A and and uh, so first of all, we, we examine just how musical is the mouthpiece. Not for this particular person, but it's in its own right. And certain designs are more musical than others. And I've been fortunate for years now to work with Ivan Hunter on, on designing mouthpieces and trumpets. And, and you're looking for little resonant points here. You take this off, you put this on, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, and suddenly the instrument blossoms. And it's, and it's different. And it, it just a little, the, 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 the brace is used and where they're put and all. It's, it's so, so, so many variables, and I've done this now for a long time, and it's fun, as I say, because the musician, if he's at all awake, at all aware, will say, yes, that, that's very different, very, very different. I might hear one violinist play, the, say, the beginning of the, chai, uh, the Sibelius violin concerto, for example, maybe a hundred times, or go into a flute store, and hear and have the same body of the flute but with different uh, head joints and hit this one, that one, that one, that one. The same piece of music over and over and then you know you're right because all of a sudden they'll smile. Now the marriage is happy and, and uh, that, that's, I mean one of the tragedies, I can do this with pianos. Um, 
we have in our house what three pianos, and uh, the you know two uprights we use for my music work with you know therapy, and the other one is a concert grand, a concert mini grand. It's it's small, but it's a concert piano, and it's the cheapest, nastiest one you can buy. It's a cheap Chinese, and yet what we could do in 10 minutes to transform it. Every, every pianist who tries it loves it. And it takes like 10 minutes to do this. It's so easy to change. You just have to have the feel, you know. And, but it, it is uh, all instruments, drums, I do a lot of work with drums. Oh, we could talk about drums forever. I mean, for start, we use, I use natural skin, not plastic skin. You never can get passion from plastic. Those two P's do not go together. And then, and then you get one which are all is one, one piece of wood, not, not veneers, and, and this and that, and how you adjust it and you tune it. And, and then on my own drum kit, I have 42 pieces there. Two 28-inch bass drums, uh, 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 cymbals, bells, and, you know, and, and goodness knows what. And, and every one is, is carefully chosen and adjusted for it to release its own life energy. But then I've got to get these 42 pieces that they're all in the same family, that they like each other. Because this may be a beautiful symbol and so may this, but they have to also play together. They're like, they're like the siblings, they've got to also go together. And when you get that right, it, it's, 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 oh, beautiful and it's, it's such fun to do this because it's like instruments want us to do that. If you take drums it's, it's, it all comes down to the same thing. Um, you, 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 think, you think up, you go down to come up. You don't beat, you, come, you go down to come up. It's always the lifting. And the same with the piano. They go down, now you go down to come up. You're always lifting, always lifting. And with the piano, for example, you can, it's very easy to start off choosing a good piano. When you play a note, especially a high note, does it come to you or does it run away from you? And that, that's the most elementary test. Which way does it go? You know, and most go away. You know, ah, oh, it's like a, like a nice dog. It's coming back to me. You know? and, and you're already starting uh, the relationship. Uh, there's a few things I just forget. I wrote a whole book on, on drumming, but one is the one is always always think of the coming up, and never use the word like beat and hit and things like that. And then and then and you look at it and you say Fred Astaire's feet. Look at the tips of the drum the drumsticks. Fred Astaire's feet. That's it. Fred Rather Astaire's than feet. Ruby yeah, yeah, clogs. <laughs> it's always the coming up. The coming up. The lifting, because music is to, is to lift. Mm. And I'll say one thing, now just while I'm mentioning about violins, a very critical thing is, is, the, now, is the wrist lock. Now, most instruments, you end up locking the wrist. Uh, trumpet, they tend to lock the wrist. Uh, drums even, they, many instruments. Now, you take the violin, they start here, then as they come down, the wrist locks, about halfway down the, 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 the stroke. At that point, they've now gone into profound negativity, gallbladder meridian rage. It's now very negative. And there is enormous difference between someone playing here and playing there in terms of the love that they're, that they're putting out. So, the, uh, and this, to a large extent, started with, uh, as far as I know, with a teacher called Galamian, who said that the bow must always be perpendicular to the strings, quote, even though it's unnatural. Give it to a kid, he automatically does this. So we have violinists who, they do this, and they, they, they move their body, they don't lock their wrist, and the energy stays up and they don't go into these 
millions of times of, of states of negativity every time the, the bow goes down. And that's how the so-called primitives play. They play with their body, not just with the hands. The same as uh, with drums, for example. You, you think about it, you, you're playing in a circle. It's coming from you. That's the advantage of the baritone horn and the tube because you're hugging this darling. You're, you're hugging it. it, it's such a, a, and you're feeling, and it's talking to you, to your body the whole time you're playing with it. You know, it's this wonderful, intimate relationship which the poor pianist doesn't get. You know, it, it's, uh, it, it's a, um, musical instruments, uh, Unfortunately, there's no musical instrument I know of that was designed to release life energy, love energy. They're not designed for that purpose. And that's what we, we, we hope. I think the ultimate um, uh, healing power of music, apart from singing, but with instruments, will come about when we when we change the designs of instruments in some way that they are inherently more affectionate.